Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. NATO will strike first. This is uh, something that we have been able to discover here uh, online, doing a lot of research on the things that are going on in the Middle East. This is very serious, very breaking news. It is also another reason why we know there is so much buildup uh, and troop movement that is going on in the Middle East and as well as in Europe. Uh, so let's go right into some very important news here for you. Uh, NATO prepares war with Russia is how we have it here on our uh, screen here, but it is NATO uh, will strike first. They are going to strike uh, not necessarily directly at Syria. They're going after the Russian Federation. You've heard me right. They're going after the Russian Federation. By the way, I've been getting many emails uh, from people uh, that have been telling me they're not able to open up uh, our videos. I guess we are hitting a nerve somewhere because uh, the information that we are finding out is clearly revealing uh, things that maybe some people would rather not be known. Uh, also, just a reminder too, we are way behind on our emails. So if you have emailed me in the last couple of weeks, I've got getting close to a thousand and emails now, so please bear with us. It'll take some time to get that caught up. Anyway, going right into this, uh, the United States is sending its B-52 bombers to the Middle East. Now, right now, no one knows where they are going, uh, but the B-52 bomber, who is all, it was also saw not long ago over China's disputed islands there, also uh, they sent the B-52 at a low altitude uh, over North Korea showing uh, Pyongyang that they are serious about uh, the nuclear capabilities of the United States because this uh, plane does carry nuclear weapons and the most in, uh, enormous pack of, uh, of arsenal of weapons on board that you could ever imagine in an aircraft. Uh, RT News has reported this. The B-52 Stratus for, Strat, uh, Stratofortress may join air campaign against ISIS in April, according to RT News. Uh, this was uh, brought out today on March the 5th. Now, let me just say this, though, uh, before we go too much into this. Uh, this is not a, a question of, of if, it is a question of when. They are definitely going to send us. As the U.S. is considering deploying its massive Boeing B-52 Stratofortress long-range strategic bomber against Islamic State, uh, a report citing U.S. Air Force officials say the aircraft is capable of simultaneously dropping 32 tons of bombs. The B-52 will replace several Rockwell B-1 Lancer supersonic strategic bombers, which had been striking terrorist positions near Kobani, Syria, for several months and have now returned to their bases in Texas. The Air Force Times reports defense officials also confirmed the information to Fox News. Now, you guys got to understand why does the United States need such a huge bombing capability in Syria with ISIS? They've already got Russia there as well. This is fixing to take a turn for the worse, my friends, and I'm talking about a really bad situation there. Uh, you know, you would think as much as Russia appears to be willing to negotiate and work with the United States, uh, NATO, and their allies, and have tried to do this for quite some time, they're not going to give up. NATO is not going to allow Russia to have anything to do with Syria, and they're not going to allow Russia to have anything to do with Ukraine or even Crimea, for that matter there. Uh, now, we'll have to see just how far this fight goes, but let's watch what else it says here. B-52, uh, the same article here, we're going to keep the B-52 around, it says in the article. It provides some missions for us that are hard to replicate, primarily the range and payload the airplane provides. The Air Force Times said, citing Lieutenant General James uh, Holmes, the Deputy Chief of Staff for Strategic Plans and Requirements, as saying on February the 20, uh, February the 18th, the B-52 Strat Fortress bomber are set to remain in active service until at least 2040. Nuclear-capable B-52s are regularly deployed when Washington needs to demonstrate its military might in intric uh, intricate countries, uh, in, excuse me, intractable 
countries. Now, if you notice, it also talks about its long-range capability. Putting it in the Middle East there makes it really easy to get up to Moscow, for example. Again, as I said, why does the United States need such a huge plane in this part of the world there? And not just bringing one, they'll bring more than one into the Middle East there, uh, no doubt. Now, let's go back on some things that we talked about recently, just yesterday, as a reminder of the buildup of the troops that are all over the Middle East right now. The IDF and the U.S. European Command undertake joint military drills. February 22nd, 2016, that was on Breaking Israel News. It says the IDF of the United States and European Command, which is NATO terminology being used here, began their 8th ballistic missile defense exercise. So it's like it's no big deal. And of course, in one way you could say that, but what is a big deal is what we have on the bottom of the screen there. Over 1,700 U.S. service members, civilians and contractors will also, also participate in an exercise aimed at addressing potential computer-related challenges that Israel face in the future. The date for the planned exercise has not yet been announced. They're not going to announce it. They're bringing in all these computer tech people because of why? 1,700? They've got to be prepared to do some jamming of Syrian equipment, and not only Syrian, Hezbollah, Iranians, Chinese, anybody you can think of, they got to do some serious jamming. Anybody that's going to be willing to get involved in this war against Russia. Because believe me, it's going to start off by Erdogan attacking Russia or attacking Syria to drag Russia into the confrontation. They're going to make it look like Russia strikes first, but in, in, in inevitability, it's going to be NATO doing the striking. You're fixing to find out right now how we know this. This is an, uh, an article uh, on Interfax. This is just the beginning now. Watch carefully. I want to go slow with you guys on this because it's extremely important. You're aware of this. I bring these things out, friends. Let me just say this too before we really get into this deep here. You know, this is serious. It's serious for Israel, their stability, their safety in the region. It is serious for the United States, for our people in America, our friends, our brothers and sisters there, because Russia, when they get pushed into a corner, they're going to use nuclear weapons. I think the United States is planning on trying to take out everything Russia has in a nuclear capability with this upcoming uh, attack. All right. It's, it's going to affect the European people as well. Because if they don't get the strike upon Russia quickly enough and fast enough, and if it doesn't work out, Russia will definitely launch the nukes. Let's watch what it says here. This is the key whole key component to what's going to go down. Poroshenko is to visit Turkey in the, uh, uh, the first quarter of 2016, expecting breakthrough. This was uh, brought out on the Interfax Ukraine, December 1st, 2016. Now, this article has nothing to compare to what you're about to see. Uh, UK, Ukraine's president, Petro Poroshenko, will visit Turkey in the first quarter of 2016. Poroshenko made the statement after he had met with Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan in Paris, an Interfax correspondent has reported. I have had a very interesting and detailed conversation with Turkish President Erdogan. The meeting was very frank and lasted for more than an hour, Borshenko told reporters. He said they had discussed a joint action plan for the future period. Now, that opens up all kinds of can of worms when you see a joint action plan for future period. This is not, this is not exercises, friends. This is a, a joint action plan. And then I was able to uncover it in the Russian language. This is where the information comes from right here that lets us know NATO is definitely planning a first strike scenario. Uh, this is a Ukrainian site. It is in Russian. Ukrainian and Russian are pretty much the same language, very similar to one another. Uh, it's kind of like the, the Czechs and the Slovak that can understand one another pretty well. It says, Ukraine and Turkey have developed a detailed plan for the deoccupation of Crimea. This is on uh, jointfo.ua, which is a Ukrainian website. Uh, I've got the entire, if you want to look this up yourself, I have the entire 
website uh, or the HTML uh, thing right here for you. Uh, drop the December 27. I don't think that was part of it originally. I think that got typed in there by accident. This did come out on December 27th of 2015. Look at what the article states here. And, and again, uh, we translated this uh, using Google Translate. Uh, political analyst Paul Nuss assured that Turkey's assistance within the action Civil Crimea bloc indicates the beginning of cooperation in Kiev and Ankara in the liberation of the peninsula from the invaders. That's Russia. They're talking about Russia, okay? The article is very interesting. Uh, you'll have to translate it manually, though, uh, or if you speak Russian, you can, you can easily read it. Uh, according to the analysts, Ukraine and Turkey have a clear plan of action towards deoccupation of Crimea. Notice the third paragraph, though. This is where it gets interesting. It's not just Ankara in Kiev. There are other powers as well. It says, today the issue of return as part of the deoccupation of Crimea has been actively discussed in the international military and political institutions, other NATO members, such as the United States, etc. Uh, and Turkey is likely to play an important role in this strategy. All right? It is the whole scenario in all the Middle East, Europe, etc. They're building up a major plan for a NATO first strike. All right. And I'm going to show you how this is going to play out. But before I do, let me real quick, I want to share with you also, uh, this is another article here, proof that Russia put troops on the Armenian border with the Turkish border there. It says, why will Russia station 7,000 soldiers on the Armenian-Turkey -Tur border? December 15, 2015. This was on the Australian Network's news. There's been many sources that have brought this out. Uh, on the request of the government, Russian troops will be deployed near the Armenian border with Turkey. World Bulletin says that the proclamations have already been signed by President Vladimir Putin and the deployment will start soon. It says that the Armenian government requested Russia to deploy its forces fearing the attack uh, are fearing attack on the country. The local media also suggests that Russia will station 7,000 soldiers with 58 Army Corps in the Armenian-Turkey border. The troops will be fully equipped with tanks and missiles. Since this report, right here in 2016, Russia has also sent in special fighter jet squadron there into the Armenian country as well. Russia is fully expecting to engage Turkey and Saudi Arabia, no doubt, with an invasion there into the Syrian uh, border. This is what's going to happen. As I'll remind you, the United States also gave smart bombs to um, Turkey recently. This was reported on the Mil Military Political Review, American Bombs as Human Value. Uh, this is on March 4th, 2016, just two days ago. America's delivered to Turkey smart bombs. These bombs are used to destroy any capital of fortification, penetrate reinforced concrete barriers, thickness of almost two meters. All right. Now, they're saying these are going to be used against ISIS. They're not there for the use of ISIS. They're there for the use of Russia. This is what's going to happen. You must remember, Turkey is getting some very advanced weaponry they've never had before. And why? Because the United States is not going to allow Syria to fall into the hands of Russia. The Turkish and the Saudis, who have spent millions of dollars uh, financing this battle to overthrow Bashar al-Assad and set up their own government there, are not going to allow this to go down. Why? The Vatican doesn't want it to go down. Now, I, we really need to sit down and do a serious broadcast that links the Vatican with all these military powers. Not only the, 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 the linking of the facts behind this, but also biblical prophecy that clearly indicts Rome as being the head of the NATO forces. Uh, many things we could get into that, but this is not the time. Right now, we need to look at this first strike scenario. So, what, we are, what, is, what is starting to, to brew up now, as I said, we see now Kiev, uh, President Poroshenko, the acting president, actually through a coup by the United States that overthrew uh, the Ukrainian uh, people there, uh, is there now. They are working with Turkey to, as they call it, to, uh, to basically break Russia's uh, control of Crimea. Now, 
Turkey and plans on doing an invasion into Syria. But this is part of a first strike against Russia. They know that when they begin to do that ground assault on the Syrian government there, basically on Russia, they've got to be able to really hit Russia in other areas. This is one of the reasons why we see here, is, let me just back up to this real quick, where the, the international military and political institutions, this has already been actively, active, notice Crimea has been actively discussed in the international military and political institutions. The United States, we already know, has sent $3.4 billion of uh, military aid to, the, to Eastern Europe. They said they're concerned about Russian aggression. And yet the whole time, John Kerry and, and Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov are discussing uh, a, a peaceful resolve for the country of Syria. Then why all the buildup? If there's going to be a peaceful resolve in Syria, why is the United States sending in their B-52 bombers? capable of nuclear weapons, no less. All right, Russia is already talking about using tactical nukes on Turkey. Turkey is not backing down whatsoever on doing a ground invasion on the country of Syria. So they're planning on being able to try to knock out everything Russia has in, in an aggressive attack everywhere. The reason why Crimea is very important in this whole battle is because Russia has a huge naval fleet there. This is where Russia's main naval fleet that supports the actions going on in the Middle East is, is stationed in Crimea. So it's not just the fact that, 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 uh, that Poroshenko is working with Ankara, working with Erdogan there to deal with uh, Crimea, this is a huge big circle. They're, they're trying to figure out where to hit Russia at the hardest. Now, Armenia is also another issue for them. Because why? Russia has now put forces there. So what have they done? The Turkish were pretty smart. They let another wave of refugees this, uh, here in the last uh, week or so go into Armenia again. No doubt coupled with spies to be able to spy more on what Russia is doing there and their capabilities. Now, we also know because this is a huge major war. You're literally going to see a world war break out here in the very coming months here. And we're fixing to be on the front lines of this because we're going to be there in Israel, right there on the Syrian border uh, in, in the coming days ahead. But uh, in this story here, this was on uh, insami.ru, another Russian website where we found this information, where Giles Meal uh, uh, says here, according to the Sunday Times, the former head of the Mossad, uh, Mir, Mir Dagin visited Saudi Arabia to discuss military cooperation in the framework of a strike on Iran. This was just published uh, two days ago. You see, this is the one opportunity for Israel to be able to take out the nuclear capability of Iran because Iran is uh, siding with Russia in this, this war. And of course, if Turkey strikes at Syria, and Syria, by the way, is Iran's uh, Bashar al-Assad. They, they are they're in agreement because they're Shiites. So they're, uh, Iran is also going to enter into this war. So this is the one opportunity that Israel has the, op the chance to go in there and knife, knock out the nuclear capability of Iran. And so they're going to take advantage of it. So they're working with the Saudis to be able to do that. And of course, the Saudis and the Turks, they need Israel's involvement because Israel has the strategic location on the western border of Syria. And now we already know the United States is already there. They've got the, you know, and, the, and by the way, the United States is not interested so much as ground troops in this invasion here. They're looking at doing, they've got to deal with Russia. So they brought in the big guns for this. They've got to deal with all the uh, electronic warfare that would be going on in the background. So they've stationed in Israel to do it because Israel also has the best technology in the world to be able to do that as well. And on top of that, the, the British are in Jordan. We've reported this a few days ago, February 7th of 2016, 1,600 British troops head to Jordan for the war game. They need to be on the southern part of Syria. The logistics war game in Jordan aims to ensure the army can still deploy 30,000 strong force of tanks and troops to crisis zone anywhere in the world, despite sharp de defense cuts in the past five years. This is a practice going all the way to the Middle East to see if you can deploy 30,000 troops. Well, it's not just the fact that they sent 1,600 troops there. They're planning on sending 30,000. Or are they going to need them there in the case of uh, Ukraine? 
because once once Turkey strikes in at, uh, at, at Syria, then in Ukraine, they're going to strike at Crimea. This is why Kiev has gotten involved in this. And by the way, in one of the articles that I read already as well, uh, and this was just the other day, and I didn't even get a chance to bring it out to you guys yet, they've already, they're, they're working with Turkey for the military equipment, bombs and stuff that they need to be able to, to, to attack Crimea. So this is a major, major issue. Now, also the U.S. is in Israel too because Lebanon would love to strike Israel, but this is not a good time for Lebanon because they're backed up in the Syrian war as well. But Lebanon does say, Nasrallah did say that the next time that he strikes at Israel, he's not just going to strike with bombs and, and wait for Israel to come in. This time he said they're going to do an invasion. This was what brought out two days ago as well. Hezbollah vows to invade Israel in the next uh, war on Israel National News. He says, in order to the next war, Hezbollah won't stay on the borders on the Israeli settlements in the north, will not be protected from this. A source close to the terror group based in southern Lebanon told the paper claiming Hezbollah now, for the first time, can infiltrate Israel in open war. So even for Israel's security, this whole issue there going on in the Middle East is a major, major problem. It's also, though, as we've been saying, the Battle of Armageddon, the prophecies of Joel, where God says he will bring all nations down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, by the way, is the valley there right around the Kidron Valley around Jerusalem. Uh, another prophecy says he'll bring them down to Jerusalem to plead with them for his people Israel. Many biblical prophecies regarding the fact of the latter days here that God is going to have all the nations in Israel. And by the way, if you look, it, this is what's kind of interesting. Now, we know that God is going to bring them to the Valley of uh, Megiddo, Hamagidon, uh, the mountain of Megiddo, or in the valley of Megiddo there. He's going to bring them there, the nations there for judgment, according to the book of Revelation chapter 16. And then also in Joel and Zechariah, he brings them down to the Jeho Jehoshaphat valley or into Jerusalem there for judgment as well. Now, if you look at the ancient map of Israel, all right, you will see that the tribe of Manasseh literally is in Syria, or what we have as modern-day Syria now. Uh, the tribe of Gad is in modern-day Jordan. So technically, a lot of these, and, and this is something we never thought about before, but a lot of these countries are already sitting in Israel right now. The Russian troops are in Israel, technically speaking, if you look at where Manasseh was given the territory, uh, just on the other side of uh, the, the Sea of Galilee, and, and northwards there, all of the territory of Manasseh, Russian troops, uh, Iranian troops, are literally sitting in Israel right now. Uh, then you have the, the Americans sitting in Israel because of the invitation of Israel. The Germans were invited into Israel uh, just, just last year as well. Don't even know if they're still there or not, but they were invited also for war games. The Jordanians uh, right now now have the British troops there in the area of Gad, uh, as we know, and that's Israel's land as well. Uh, so all of the, and, and the Chinese are also there in Syria, so they may very well be in the area of Manasseh. We know that they actually went up to Latkia, which is not Manasseh's land, but who knows where all the troops and stuff are right now. The point is, as many of the nations of the world are technically already there in Israel. And all this war going on here in the Middle East is only paving the way for that future battle where God will bring judgment on the, on the nations of the world for what they've done to Israel over the last 2,000 years. All right, now, continuing on to show you how the plan is being prepared for a first strike on, basically, you might as well say Russia. The UK is, is sending five ships to the Baltic uh, as a part of the NATO buildup against Russia. That's what it says right there, against Russia. The Guardian says, this was on February 10th of 2016, a sizable contingent of British troops are also likely to contribute to a new NATO force for up to 6,000 to be stationed on the uh, uh, rotational bases in six countries bordering Russia. A decision on troops numbers is expected to be taken at the NATO summit in Warsaw in the summer. Eastern European countries, Poland, Bulgaria, Romania, and Latvia in uh, Estonia. By the way, the United States is planning this exact same thing. A time, I don't have time to put it all in there. Uh, the U.S. is fortifying Europe's east to deter Putin. This was according to the New York Times on February 2nd, 2016. 
Uh, President Obama plans to substantially increase the deployment of heavy weapons, armored vehicles, and other equipment to NATO countries in Central Eastern Europe, a move that the administration officials said was aimed at deterring Russia from further aggression in the region. Friends, this is nothing about further aggression of Russia. Uh, a, a Russia, they did. They took Crimea. According to statistics, though, 90% of the people in Crimea are Russian descendants. They're Russian-speaking people. Uh, they did it with a referendum. NATO says that it was not a referendum. But then again, Ukraine was overthrown as well by the United States backing, backing with, their, with, their, with the U.S. Uh, using neo-Nazis of Europe to be able to overthrow the government there. And we see the eastern side of uh, Ukraine, who are Russians as well, trying to get Russia to help them. Russia is helping them. You know, I, I don't want to make this look like Russia is some great knight in shining armor. Russia is not there. I, Russia is there to protect their own people and their own interest in Ukraine as well. And this is why Russia does deploy tr troops inside of Ukraine. So yes, they do. So does the United States. They're battling one another in guerrilla warfare between the two countries already. So regardless of what they want to call peace efforts in Syria, this is not a matter about peace efforts. This is a matter about NATO. They figure the only way they can contain Russia is to strike first. And I am watching in the articles. Uh, in fact, in that one article, and I'll back up to it real fast. I think it's worth for you guys to see this. Um, this article here that was on the Ukrainian website, it's stated later on in the article there, they did not want to release everything because it was, uh, I forget exactly how it says it there, but it, it, in other words, it was a risk of le releasing too much information. So in other words, they don't want Russia to know what their plans are. If they didn't want Russia to know what their plans were, why did they even put this article up on their own website? Joinfo.ua. They put in there, they're planning on attacking Russia with Turkey. Hello, you don't think Russia don't know this? Oh my gosh. And the sad thing is, they implicate NATO right along with it. So the United States is implicated with this. And the U.S. is preparing for it. I believe Russia is aware of it as well. They're just not saying anything. Friends, if you have never known Yeshua, Jesus, for those that don't know Yeshua by his name, Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, if you do not know him as your own savior, I think this is a good time to, to, to meet him. It's a good time to get on your knees and pray and repent before the Lord and ask him to forgive you of your sins. The only safe place there is, friends, will be in Christ, in Yeshua, protected by the Ruach HaKodesh the Holy Spirit. There is no safe place outside of that. This war will no doubt start very soon. I don't know how long it will last, but it will definitely be fought. I do believe nuclear weapons are going to be used, perhaps small ones, perhaps not, maybe even bigger ones, but it's definitely going to come down to that. There will be a cessation of hostilities when this part of the battle ends. And I do believe also this is one reason why you even see North Korea. Don't think that Russia is not using North Korea. Uh, this crazy young man over there in this government there that's willing to use nuclear force against South Korea or even the United States. Believe me, Russia works with them. The Iranians definitely work with them because the Iranians got their nuclear capabilities from North Korea. But they need a diversion as well, because believe me, if they start getting hit really hard from, the, from NATO in the Middle East here, Russia really gets hit at home. They're going to also use North Korea to launch nuclear weapons, whether it be on South Korea, whether it be on, on uh, the United States, whatever the, cap the, whatever the situation may be, they're going to do it. China is there to back Russia. So it's another major problem there. And China also has a huge capability. I do not think that Israel is going to really be affected in this war at this point here. Although Russia does have interest with the West Bank, with uh, the oil agreement that they signed with Bashar al-Assad, but you've got to understand, the United States didn't like that either. 
The Vatican doesn't like that, because remember, the Vatican owns a huge majority of the stocks of the Shell Oil Company, as well as Gulf Oil International. And they have all the rights for that in Syria, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Qatar, all these areas here, the Vatican owns uh, international oil company there. I say Vatican owned, they own a lot of the stock in the, in the company there. Uh, so you might as well say it's a Vatican owned company. This is why the Vatican doesn't like Russia in the middle of this either. Because see, Russia still has not bowed down to the Pope fully. Yes, the, yes President Putin did go to the Vatican, but he never, he never did allow the Pope yet to his own country. And the Pope will not come until he has gotten full control of Russia, and he doesn't have it yet. So the Vatican doesn't want Russia nosing around here in the Middle East. It's serious, friends. NATO is planning a first strike. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom. Pray for Israel. Even though Israel will still become a target by her enemies, but I think her enemies will be too tied up with dealing with NATO's forces attacking them at this time. It'll be, it'll be a chance for Israel also to try to push back their own enemies, including Hezbollah, because Hezbollah will no doubt get involved in this war as well, but the United States may, may heavily bomb them as well at that point. I'm Stephen Miller, watching this